<laughs> hey you guys, welcome aboard Crab Central Station. My name is Darcy and this video is going to be more of a vlog style after this initial introduction because it is breeding season and we are so excited but this little mama purple pincher back here on this um, cork round is carrying mature eggs and she is ready to spawn very soon. So we're actually keeping an eye on her because she is <laughs> sitting right next to the saltwater pool and we are not quite ready for her to spawn. So we're running around like crazy, getting everything up and running. Um, I didn't know when she had made it, so we weren't really sure when her eggs are gonna be mature. But, um, and then I hadn't seen her in a while, so I thought maybe something went wrong and she had dropped them on the sand. Um, but this morning I found her sitting here at the pool and uh, this afternoon we got a really good look at her eggs, which um, you can see the little eyes of the Zoe in there and they are light gray, almost translucent. So we know that it is almost time for baby Zoe. So we're gonna get the Chrysal up and running. We're gonna show you guys kind of really from the start how to do this um, so that you can kind of come along on this journey with us. We're getting everything set out, laid out, ready to go um, so we can get started putting everything together. This is what our room looks like. We have gotten this much set up in about 40 minutes. We need this whole thing salt water. We need this, this whole, whole thing, thing salt water. water. But, but this is enough to spawn. She could spawn there and we could keep working. Yes. So when we placed the purple pincher mama in the chrysal to try and do an assisted spawn, um, she didn't respond to that. She didn't want to spawn. So we took her out. We knew it was time. We knew these babies were ready. So instead of placing her back in the main tank where she could spawn anywhere um, or in the big saltwater pool, instead it made her a special little ISO um, tank and we called it a little birthing room. But um, this isolation tank went in the main tank so that she had the correct heat and the correct um, humidity. And so this is just a critter keeper um, container that I put some substrate in. And then this is just a Tupperware bowl that is nice and clean. I didn't put anything in the bottom. It's just the salt water and then you have to have aeration um, for the Zoe and so this is just a simple air stone that I linked in here and then this is light filter to use as the ladder for her to get down um, like a ramp and uh, and then she was pretty stressed out over the whole thing so we gave her some food and a little plant um, to kind of give her some privacy. I know this is not a whole lot of sub but we really wanted to encourage her to get in the water and um, so this is what we placed her in and then again I put this in the main tank and then we placed this over the top um, so that, there we go, so that she couldn't get out and other crabs couldn't get to her, but she had plenty of space in there for the evening. Um, and then I checked on her almost all night. I went to bed at almost two o'clock, so. All right, good morning. This is day the second day. Um, we put together this little isolation for the mama crab. Um, because she didn't assist, went to spawn in the, uh, the assisted spawn in the Chrysler yesterday. And so we we're hoping that she would spawn in the saltwater pool here in this little isolation tank. And um, I'm looking right now, we have some Zoe in the pool, but we have some eggs on the sand. She dropped some there. And so I'm going to try and uh, put them in 
a little jar and just see if we can get any more of these eggs to hatch. So that's what I'm doing right now. Okay, so what I'm gonna do right now is there's some sand in here from yesterday when we tried to do the assisted spawn. And so I'm gonna try and clean that out so that we have a nice clean chrysal. And then I'm going to transfer the Zoe from the holding tank over here and kind of just see how many we have. Um, the eggs I picked up off the sand and put in the jar, um, it's not looking very promising that they're gonna hatch. So this is gonna be a very small um, batch that we're gonna have to try and bring to land. So we'll see what we can do. So. We have our little birthing tank right here. Let's see if I can show you guys. There we go. So we have our pool here. Let me do this. I don't know the best way. Alright. So here are the Zoe that made it into the water. I am going to try and just carefully dump this in there, hopefully not making too much of a mess. All right, so crazy, crazy morning already. Um, so far, I have emptied the Zoe that were in the little birthing ISO container into um, the, the Chrysal. And there's some, but not a whole lot. And then I found that um, she had dumped a bunch of her eggs on the sand in the ISO tank. And so I took a spoon and just very carefully scooped them off the sand and put them in this little bucket right here um, because I had heard that if you catch them in time, like getting them off the sand in time and um, put them in a jar with salt water that you might be able to save them. So I was like, may as well try. I don't know how long they've been there, but um, anyway, so that's what I did. And I just have an air stone in here, um, a pretty high, I guess. but. Um, Anyway, I just checked to see, and we definitely have some hatched little babies in here. So, let me see if I can show you guys. You know, it looks like a lot of mess. This is not going to be fun to clean because it's got a lot of sand in it. But... You can definitely see that some have hatched. Definitely have some hatched Zoe. You can see them bouncing around in there. How I'm gonna get them out of here, I have no idea. So for now, I'm just gonna leave this on <laughs> till I figure out what to do next. Anyway, so that's how my morning is going so far. That's how our attempt three, journey to land three, um, but our first attempt with purple pinchers is going not as planned, not great, but not terrible. Okay, I think what I'm gonna try first in getting the Zoe out of the jar is to um, turn the lights off and to shine a flashlight here in the jar. And Zoe um, hopefully will swim toward the light and I can catch them in this pipette um, and see how that goes. That's, that's what I'm gonna try first. There's so many. I don't know how many alive, but there's so many. So clearly she did not actually spawn in the water um, because, 
yeah, most of the eggs are here in this jar. So this is definitely a um, failed spawning and human intervention <laughs> to make it happen. <laughs> I'm kind of blown away because Ecuadorians did not swim towards the light and like these guys, they do. They swim towards the light. It's going to make it so much easier. Easier. <laughs> like this is easy. Girls, I'm trying to save you. Come on. Okay, I'm going to let this on for a minute. I got to think of the plan B. There's so many. Okay. Um. Put some more. I'm gonna put some more water in here. Keep it warm for one. But I'm taking water out each time too, so we do that. you do <laughs> okay so I just got back from working and the babies are here um, most of them are in this jar so we have to pick them out of here there we go we can see them why do I feel like you can see them so much better or are there just more it's bigger than the E's they do seem a little bigger not much when I was thinking bigger I was thinking a lot bigger um, she spawned half on the sand half in the water so we have some in the crest already. These guys, we just got to get out. Okay, so it is now 4.40, almost 5 o'clock, and we still have this jar of Zoe. It has a bubbler in it. It's in a warm room, so they're, they're okay, but we need to finish getting the Zoe in here. Um, we spaced it out because we wanted to make sure that they're floating around, getting enough oxygen, and not staying still too long, so we've just been letting them go for a little bit. Also, we needed a break. We did also need a break. <laughs> we are going to finish putting the Zoe from this jar into the chrysalis over here. And let's do it. Let's get this done. <laughs> you okay back there? I've been staring in this jar for hours today. For hours. And there might be some living ones in there, so it makes me sad. But at some point you have to say you've done the best you can do and probably not going to get them all, but I can't stare in the jar anymore. Yeah. So we spent another hour and a half, we spent an hour, a couple hours earlier today, and then she spent all morning on them, yeah. so we did Saved the best we can do. As many oh, babies as yeah. we can. The issue is that a lot of them are dead, collecting at the bottom, so you have to kind of like search through the dead ones to find the living ones. Um, but we just did it for about an hour and a half, got as many as we could. Um, some interesting observations we found is that, so last year we had the Ecuadorians. They were not light receptive at all. They didn't come to the glass when you held the light up to it. These ones do, and their eyes also reflect light, so it's kind of easier to see them. When I originally found that, had spawned last night and that there weren't very many in the pool and then when I discovered that there were many eggs on the sand I was pretty discouraged um, thinking this might not even be worth like trying but I think um, I think a lot of them hatched actually mm -hmm. from the sand there's not a whole lot of eggs left in here actually and so that's pretty miraculous most of them itself. hatched <laughs> most of them hatched from yeah. the sand they didn't all live um, Most of our, like 400 died from Probably, hatching. yeah, maybe. So, anyway, but we do have a lot more than I originally thought we were going to in the chrysal, and so that's pretty exciting. We did go ahead and split it into the two different chrysals so that um, the water quality is lower, yeah. uh, higher, longer.
guys, thanks for watching this very first vlog of our reading attempt for 2021. We are gonna try and upload these as often as we can. So go ahead and subscribe to our channel down below and click the bell so that you can be notified next time we drop a video. Also you guys, it would be great if you could share, comment, like this video, it'll really help us out. And we're gonna include a link in the description below where you can go and support our reading program if you would like. Um, also guys, we are so excited to just have you on this journey with us, encouraging us and just here to learn and grow um, with us. So thank you so much. We appreciate you guys. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.